all being well you've already watched the first video so you've got GFY Mail Archiver set up to actually set up the Outlook connector there's a global change you need to make on the GFI server itself so if you launch the management console and we need to enable mailbox folder structure retrieval click on that change settings tick to enable it again I'm going to connect with Exchange Web Services supply it with the login details now I'm using my admin, admin account you don't have to but whatever account you do use make sure you run those two PowerShell commands against that user and that user also needs to be an administrator local administrator on the exchange and the GFI server hopefully as you say that it is set up successfully next finish so now it should say enabled that's a set up server side so to actually install the Outlook connector that needs to be done client side so here I've got a Windows 7 client already set up with uh, Outlook 2010 now to get the uh, Outlook connector client I'm simply going to connect to um, the Mail Archiver Management Console uh, go to Email Client Access tab in the middle and I'm going to download the plugin now you can put this in a central location or you can send it out with group policy or whatever I'm just going to download this direct I need the warning there I did try and install the 64-bit one on the 32-bit version and it complained so install connection software accept all the defaults and the only th accept the end user license agreement the only thing that you will have to type in is the URL of the GFI mail archiver server so it's server name slash mail archiver providing you accepted the defaults when you installed the product simple as that, click finish this time when you open Microsoft Outlook what you will find is in addition to your usual mailbox below it you've got a GFI mail archived mailbox that has a copy of all the mail that you have sent and received so if your user were to delete an email from their inbox and they wanted it back like so there would still be a copy in the GFI Mail Archiver Mailbox inbox. There it is there. To get it back, you can simply drag it back to your inbox. Now, fair enough, I, I do accept that if you delete something from your inbox, it will go into your deleted items, like so. So, your user could have done this anyway. If they deleted from there, they could have gone to there and restored it. However, were they to delete it from here and it would have disappeared you would be looking at backup types and restoring stuff whereas here it's still in the inbox of your archive mailbox and your user can drag it back without having to log a call to the support desk without generally giving you any hassles up here you'll notice that the Outlook connector installs a toolbar which the user can use to search all the mail that they have archived in the, da in the database and they can search for it by keyword for example anything with test in it this is just my test network so there's not a great deal of email in there but you can see how useful this would be to a user if they claim that they had had a mail on such and such a days and now they can find it this would find it for them even if it was not in their mailbox that's what the client sees to actually put information into and take information out of Mail Archiver 
there is a tool under GFI Metal Archiver called the Import and Export tool. This is particularly good if your user's got PST files all over the place because what you can do is drag all those PST files together and get them imported. You can also import Exchange mailboxes from Exchange for all your legacy stuff that sat in Exchange before you turned on journaling etc. Now as it says on the screen there to import PST files you need to have Outlook installed because it uses the mappy bits and bobs of Outlook and don't mistakenly install the 64-bit version because otherwise it will complain and then you have to take it off and install the 32-bit version so there's a copy of the PST file that I have, I'm going to import that into the GFI Mail Archiver database simply select add PST file and browse to it now I'll drop that one on the desktop there it is there Click open and what it'll do is it'll interrogate that PST file and it will show you the structure of it. I'm only gonna import the inbox, so I'm not importing anything else for the purpose of this. Click next. Okay, I'm importing it directly into GFI Mail Archiver. I need to set a start and end date or date range that I would like. So I'll just open that up, just so I actually get some mail. And then you need to select who's going to be the owner, or which user, this is going to be tagged in the database against. So I'm just going to use the pick long user object. Click OK. Now, I don't need to export folder structure, because I don't have any other folders below the inbox in that, but if you had complex inboxes, you would leave that ticked. you notice it's uh, exported 172 and it's skipped 8. That might be because they're rather corrupt or they're outside the date range that we specified. Click finish. And those emails are now in the Mail Archiver database. Now, just to prove this isn't all smoke and mirrors, to prove they are actually in the database, if I launch the GFI Mail Archiver Management Console, currently logged in as the Peak Long user. So if I go to Archive, you can see I have considerably more mail than I had earlier. Albeit there's not 100 and odd, but the default display is for the last 30 days. That's why you can only see that many. And you can see there's the email who it's from to, and over on the right hand side there you can see the content of the email. That's all very well and good for getting information into the database, but what if you wanted to export data out of the database for Sarbanes Oxley or for a Freedom of Information? You can simply make sure that resolves. Click Next. What information do you want to export? Either an entire mailbox or emails containing specific words or search criteria. I'm going to select emails containing certain words so if I look for obviously there's going to be quite a few of these because that's my domain name but this is just my test network so I'm going to select them and click next what format do I want to export them to I'm going to choose PST you can either export them as EML MSG or you can export them directly into another mailbox if you so wish but I'm going to select PST and click next and those seven emails are put in that PST file and those are successfully exported. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to come and visit us at www.pnetlife.com.